morning and thank you for joining our online service. May you be blessed today. Let us pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for another opportunity to be gathered before you. We thank you for keeping all your promises. We know for sure that your name rules over nations. Your glory is higher than the heavens and the earth. You are beautiful beyond description. In our different locations this morning, we praise you, we praise your holy name. And together we come into a time of worship so that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please let's join my time of worship. Well, good morning, family. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a really good week. I know that I yeah. say that every week, but I really do hope you've had a good week. Um, firstly, Aria isn't with us right here, but she's asleep upstairs. Um, who knows, she might wake up mid-worship. Um, but yeah, thank you to those that are watching online. And, you know, even if you're not from the UK, like you're so welcome to worship with us. Um, yeah, I hope you've had a good week, but obviously, there's so much going on in the world at the moment mm. that I, it's, it's understandable if some of us feel a bit um, sort of like troubled in our hearts and a bit weary. Um, I certainly have felt a bit weary and a bit anxious in my heart. Sometimes like all the events of 2020, when you really look at every single one, your brain's just like... Um, so I think it's really important that this morning we just give any of that anxiety, any of that worry... Um, all of the current events, we just hand them over to yeah. God. Hand our our worry over to God. Hand those burdens over to God. If we feel so strongly about things, hand that over to God mm. as well. Um, yeah, um, it's just really important that, that we do that. And sometimes I can't make sense of what's going on in my heart, but I know that Jesus can help me make sense of that. Yeah. Um, and also show me what his heart is. Um, so I just want to read from Psalm 139, verse 23, and it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Amen. We're going to sing a song called No Other Name. Feel free to dance and shout and celebrate God wherever you are. We look to you this morning, Lord Jesus. We fix our eyes on you. Oh, 
my god, it's good. Well, look who's joined us. There she is. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you that our assurance, our confidence is in you. We thank you that you call us your sons and daughters. Your friends, Father. We thank you that you are ours and that we are yours. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, and hair of salvation, purchased of God.
this is my song, praising my Savior.
You will reign forevermore And the praise is yours And the praise is yours And the praise is yours You're the one we bow
Whatever it is you're facing in life, we just want to encourage you. Whatever it is you're waiting for, if you're believing God for a baby too, we are here as proof that God is faithful. And He is no respecter of persons. What He did for us, He will do for you. But if you believe in God for something else, for a breakthrough in your finances, for a breakthrough in your family, for a breakthrough in your health, whatever it is, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself promised us in Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 7, and in verse 7. I just want to share this with you. Jesus Himself said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, everyone, says Jesus, everyone that asks, receives. And to he that seeks, he finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Brothers and sisters, regardless of how long it has been, we see this delay is nothing more, nothing less. It is no denial. It is simply God's timing. And we're here to celebrate the fruit of it, and you will too. We just want to bless God for you, and we want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you hear all of our prayers, that you heed them, and that you're responding to them in your time. Father, we thank you that you encourage us to faint not. You encourage us to hold on praying expectantly. And Father, we thank you for this glimpse of goodness that you've given us. Yeah, and Father God, I just want to pray for everyone in our congregation and all those who are listening. I thank you for the promises that you have spoken over their lives. It may be a child that they're waiting for, or it may be something else. And it may be something that's taken a long time. And I just pray, Lord God, that today you would encourage their hearts that even if something takes a really long time to come to pass, that you are faithful. Um, it says in Numbers 23, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Oh Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. And I just pray that all those promises that have been spoken over members of our church and anyone who's watching, Lord God, that you would bring those to pass, Lord God, in your timing, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God hears you. God is watching. And God is answering. Yes, thank you. We are so thankful to you for your faithfulness and prayer for holding us up. And we look forward to sharing the fruit with you when you see baby broken in December. Yeah. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day, because we really, really are too. Amen. 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 Yes, I just want to echo um, Marty's thanks. So many of you have stood with us over the years. You've prayed with us, encouraged us, shared words with us, and we really, really appreciate every single one of you. And um, we, we thank you for your support and that you can share in the joy of our testimony. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the word. So welcome back. As we go into today's service, you're welcome. And let's go into a time of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us alive for keeping us alive at such a difficult time as this, we say thank you, Father. These plans that you have for each person, we say thank you for not letting us derail from it. Lord, we know we are born for a purpose and pray that nothing tampers with the plans you have for each and every one of us. Holy Spirit divine, help us to know and understand the plan that heaven has for us. We come against any theory that is contrary to your word. Give your people clarity of your word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, the title of this message is Now. There is a now time for all of us. And as we have gathered, whether you are invited, or a regular member, 
you are welcome. This morning, I want us to look at some scriptures together. And I ask that the Holy Spirit help us as we reflect on it. I just want to look at the phrase in the passage, now. Let's go open our Bibles to John 4. John chapter 4. And I'm starting from verse 10. John chapter 4 from verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come either to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And thou sayest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. You worship ye not what you know. What we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. May the Lord bless his words. You would notice that in this chapter, Jesus left before verse 10. Jesus left Judea and went through into Galilee, through Samaria. And you also notice that he was already waiting at the well before the Samaria woman came. No one else was there. The disciples had gone to meet, to find meat. So I began to realize that Jesus wanted a one-to-one -one time with this woman, the woman of Samaria. It was not coincidental, it was deliberate. He wants a one-to-one -one with each one of us. There is a divine plan for each one of us, and that of the woman of Samaria was at the well. The Samaria woman was born for a time as now. There was a visitation by Jesus. When is yours? Let us go back into that scripture and look at it verse by verse. You see, in verse 10, Jesus was trying to say to this woman that anyone that believeth in him, Jesus, may come and drink because rivers of living waters flow from his heart. That he, Jesus, is the spring fountain of salvation, and with joy you can draw water from the well of salvation. But the woman did not understand. 
He was talking about the well, about Jacob, and all the things she has had, all the theories she has read. You see, if the disciples were there, Jesus would not have been able to have time to spend time and to explain things to the understanding of this woman. So because they were not there, there was that time of one-to-one. Same with the woman. If the other people were there at the well, at the time she would not have had that time and audience with Jesus, she wouldn't have been able to express herself, especially as a Samaritan woman. But if you look at verse 15, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I test not, neither come hither to draw. You see, something seems to have clicked, but still with a different understanding. The woman said, okay, give me this water. Not because she understood that from Christ flows rivers of living water, but because it will help her and stop her from having to come to the well. And she would have never to even have to come. The motive of her understanding was different. When you then go into verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. You see, Jesus had begun to understand that this woman was not listening. She was having different theories and different understanding. So just like God spoke to Moses and said, What is in your hand? Jesus decided to change the scope of discussion and said, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you. Let's see if you will even tell us the truth about yourself. Jesus is doing the same to you. Let's reflect on the last or the past three, four months over the lockdown. Go bring your family that you have spoken to during this lockdown. Go bring your neighbors that you have shown Christ that you conduct yourself during this period? Or how many people have you interceded for in the last three months? Now that you are at home, when was the last time you came to Bible online? When was the last time you joined the live group online? Or has this time just been a spare time for you to discuss the political issues and events happening around. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come either. The good thing is the woman said the truth. I have no husband. If there is no change since the lockdown, say it. Remember that the truth will set you free. You see, when we started this lockdown, I was saying that I was going to read three books. I brought out three books, but I've been able to only read one because I thought there was time. What have you planned to do in the last three months and you've not been able to do anything? There is no time. In verse 19, verse 19, the woman said unto her, unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You see, she had now started to understand that Jesus is the truth. So she started to see Jesus in a different way. Thou art a prophet. She became freer and free to talk to Jesus. She started to express her concern because she was being taught that the only place that God is present on earth is in the temple in Jerusalem. Yes, as a Samaritan, she was not allowed in or even near the temple, which would seem to condemn her to permanent banishment from God. But Jesus reassured her, just as he's reassuring you today, that it really doesn't matter. Dear brothers and sisters, 
Jesus is assuring it more assuredly. If you believe, Jesus is assuring us that where we fellowship with him matters not. He says, but the hour is coming, and now is that hour when the true worshippers will worship it, the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, Charles Fulmer said in his book, he said that in this world, our mortal understanding is attached to localities, to forms and conditions. That we believe in the importance of place where we worship. As important as this is, I miss it, and I'm sure you miss the gathering. But at such a time as this, we need to put all that aside, all formalities aside, and proclaim the university of spiritual forces. One of God's attributes is that God is infinite, loving, powerful, available within each and every one of us in temple or religious structures in the world. You remember those days that seemed so long ago when you, we all used to gather here, we come together to share and fellowship together and to support each other, to learn the word and to express our love for Christ. Looking back now, we might have taken that time for granted and maybe treated it like our weekly shopping where we interrupt our busy schedule once a week, rush into the church, come in, praise and worship, and then forget about him and get back to what we would rather be doing. And I'm hoping that throughout this lockdown, this has not been that with you. You have been able to have a personal relationship now with Father. You see, God created us for the ultimate priority of fellowship with Him, to be in the act of worship. And the time is now. A Westminster Catechist puts it this way The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Even John Piper puts it this way, he says, our chief aim, our chief end is to glorify God by enjoying Him forever. Where we gather to worship is secondary. Who and whom we worship is primary. We sometimes mistakenly think just like the Samaritan woman that if we go through the proper external worship, then things are okay between us and God. You think if I go to church building and go through the weekly rituals, all is well. This lockdown should have given us a better awareness that dealing with God is a personal experience and that it must be on the art level. This is very important. And that was why Jesus wanted to have a one-to-one -one with the woman to tell her that it is not the external that matters as much as the internal. We must make it our priority to become true worshippers of God in spirit and in truth. The same with the world today. Even our families that have not come to the knowledge of Christ, I beg you, no longer take them for granted. Speak to them now. You see, when we have the time and the opportunity to sit down and talk and drink, we all took it for granted. To tell our loved ones how much we love them, we took it for granted. Well, I took it for granted. The last time I saw one of my friends, I needed to speak the truth to him. 
But I thought I would catch up with him in March. Now he's gone. And I never got to tell him that one thing. That in Christ alone flows rivers of living water. That salvation is for me. Some are gone without us being able to say goodbye. Some are still in the ICU. <clears throat> In some care homes, and some we can't even visit them. Please don't take now for granted. Today is as important as worship is. I am not talking about worship, I'm not really focusing on that word worship, but the actual passage. Now, there's a set time. That set time is now. Your now could be yesterday. Your now could be today. Your now could be tomorrow. Whatever your now is, we need to arise to pray now. We need to arise into proper worship now. We need to seek Him now that we can find Him. We need to love, to show love to our family now. Especially if you are blessed and your family are around you. Maybe your own now is now. Then please do it now. Seek God now. Pray for yourself and your family now. The doctors, the nurses, the medical workers, the NHS workers, teachers, and other key workers have done their own bit. Now is our turn. You need to do your bit now. Well, at least by continuing to stay safe and keep safe. But as a child of God, there's something extra we need to do. Whilst we are in our different safe places, we need to pray now. We need to turn our homes into a place of worship now into an environment of fellowship with our family now into a sacred and holy ground into a prayer soul turn it away from arguments from confusion from fear from uncertainty from worry of what you are seeing and what you are hearing Stop saying nothing good can come out of all this. It's not looking good. The purpose for which you are born is for a time such as now. And that time is now. We need to really have an understanding of now. There's something external. There's a reason why God has kept you through all this. We had a warning of being prepared for COVID-19 as much as we might think we were not prepared. There was an opportunity for some to get treatment, some to isolate, and some had the use of ventilator. So there was an element of preparation. Brothers and sisters, it will not be like this with rapture. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You see, unclear as this passage might be, seem to you, the Lord is asking us to watch therefore for a time as now. Just as Jesus prepared his disciples for his resurrection, he's preparing us, he's preparing you, and he's preparing me. Something must happen in us after all this to show 
that you understand that time and that the time is now. That all this is the need of the hour. We need to understand the importance of the time. You see, if you look at 1 Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 7, from verse 29, 1 Corinthians 7, from verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they weep not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passes away. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried, carry it for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may be, he may please the Lord. You see, Paul is saying at this time that the time is short, and we should concentrate on the important things, things that concern us, things that matter to bring our mind to now. Also in Matthew 24, Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, verse 36, Matthew 24 from verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that the Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken away, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But now this, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think, not the Son of Man coming. You see, Jesus did the same. He's warning us to be ready. If we haven't been, now is the time to be ready. From everything that is happening, can't you tell that the time is short? Even though no one knows the time, hour or day, Jesus is our great example, our teacher, and he was a man of now. Remember the marriage in Canaan of Galilee? And when Jesus' mother wanted Jesus to get involved in John 2, 4, Jesus said, Woman, mother, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. But later Jesus began to realize that the time of now was approaching. So in Matthew 4, in Matthew 4, 17, when the time came, Jesus said, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus did everything at his time. You see, the good thing is, once God gives us a now, he will give us the grace to do it. 
Nothing will be in our minds or strength. Everything Jesus did was at the right time. So every step, every decision, every statement was always at the appropriate time. Same with John the Baptist. He knew when it was time for his own now. This happened because he knew and understood God's timing. All that has happened in this world is crucial and shows us that it's time for us to start to act now. Let us not be unwise of what the will of God is for us at such a time as now. Where are you now? Any change after these three months? Can something good come out of Nazareth? The good thing that should come out of this for me and you, even though we have lost loved ones, we have lost close friends, but don't let us be distracted and end up missing heaven. In that same verse, Matthew 4, verse 19, Jesus told them, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, Jesus said, follow me. It was not a convenient time for them. What better time than now for God to call you and to call me and say, hear me, follow me, I will make you. Brethren, the time is now. We cannot afford to be preoccupied when we should be occupied with the work of Father. We pray and we come against premature death. We pray and we rebuke the virus. We pray and we say, let there be no sickness and untimely death. But if I was to go now, where will I go? Nobody knew about this virus, but it came like a thief in the night. Thank God that we are slowly seeing the end of it. But then nobody could have forecast that in the midst of everything, there would be as much as over 30 million unemployed in the U.S. Then another crisis, so sensitive, will engulf, engulf America at such a time as now. What next? No one knows. Maybe this is your own now to stand up for what you believe in. I cannot go to America now. I might not have been able to go out to demonstrate now. You might agree or disagree with what is going on around us. One thing I can do is I can arise now and pray. Pray for the peace of America. Pray for the family of George Floyd. That the Lord comforts that family and give them peace. And I also need to remember to keep praying for the soul of the policeman, Derek, that he will come to the knowledge of Christ. You see, we have always struggled to accept one another. Yet Matthew 35, 36 Matthew 35, 36, in the latter verse says, For you can't make one hair white or black. As I start to round up, I want to tell you a short story. This story I've probably not even told my own family. But 20 years ago, when I wanted to start my law degree, I went into the university and I said I wanted to register. And the person that was registering me asked me what I wanted to do, and I told him. And the registrar shook his head, and he said, with your accent, I'm not really sure. I didn't carry any placards. I passed, and I finished the course. Six years after, I wanted to train, and I went to agency, and I wanted a job. And again, one of the Agency consultant said, hmm, I'm not sure you will get any job that will be able to pay you as a trainer. You 
you see, I think it's still not carrying a placard. But ten years after, I met the same registrar in court, and he recognized my name. Fifteen years after, the same agency spotted my name somewhere, and he called me, have you qualified now? This is 20 years ago. You see, I cannot carry a placard, but I carried Christ inside of me, and he saw me through. I began to understand acceptance is the issue. The words of Anne Mulia, acceptance is what we need and want from each other. But all too often, we go around asking for approval instead. Acceptance means I receive you as you are. Acceptance comes from having respect for each other. You can't accept what you don't respect. Without respect, acceptance does not exist. Acceptance says, I do not have to understand you in order to value you. Maybe now you need to stand up. Please do it in love. Love people, but hold firm to your conviction and belief. Love is holding the tension of grace and truth. You see, if you look at Proverbs 20, Proverbs 20 in the easy read says, do not say, you have hurt me, so I will hurt you. This Lord himself will make it right. Proverbs 20, 22. Finally, I ask, with all this, are you ready for the journey of Christ? Are you ready to journey with him now? You see, in the next few months, if God tarries, we may be fellowshipping again together, praying together, sharing together in our building. Will it be the same again? Or do you yearn for a change? Will it be business as usual? Or do you yearn for a now? If you are yearning for a now, or you think this is me, my now is here, or maybe you have decided to take him as your Lord and your personal Savior. When is my own now? How can there be a now when I don't even know him? Who is this Jesus that met the Samaritan woman? I would like to meet him too. Don't worry. Because remember the Bible says in 2 Peter 3.9 that the Lord is not slow. Is not slow in keeping his promise, as you and I might think, slowness is. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but for everyone to come to repentance. If you want to come to him now, to repent of all your sins and start a recovery journey with him, then please, let me pray with you and for you. Are you ready to do that this morning? Bow down with me and let us pray. Lord, please come into my heart. I desperately need you. You promise that if I confess my sin, you will forgive me and make me clean again. Lord, I truly need you. I need your forgiveness. Repentance is on my heart and lips. I want to turn around and head back to you. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. Lord, help me to know you, to understand the road to Calvary, how you were crucified, died, and buried. 
Then I rose up on the third day. As I start this journey, Holy Spirit, teach me the mystery of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. And together, what has this lockdown and all these events in the last few weeks done to you? Permanent scar or unforgivable heart? I want you to know the words of Second uh, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ, liveth in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If you really believe that, let's all pray together as we come to the end of the service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to get through this time. Help me to put away all my slothfulness, prayerlessness, lack of interest in searching your word. In my now, I want to be a new creature. Just like the virus goes away, let every self go away in me, and for all things to become new. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and declare that the time of messing around is over, and our time is now. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity to be able to come into your presence again. We praise and we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. As we end, John 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. May the peace of God be with you, and the Spirit of God help you and your journey of now. If you have just given your life or rededicated your life, please listen to the short message after this service. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Let's close with an act. Well, God bless you, church. Have a fantastic week. Have a fantastic week. <laughs> Have an awesome week. Um, we will see you next week. We miss you guys. Love you guys. Missing the huggies. huggies. All right. We're going to go with a song called Awesome, Awesome God. You
Hi, if you responded to the invitation to follow Jesus and you prayed that prayer of salvation, we would like to help you as you begin the exciting adventure of following Jesus. Contact us at firststeps at kingschatham.org and we will send you a booklet to help you in this journey as you follow him. And we will also be praying for you.